Spelling Goddess. Mr. Jupiter's students were taking their weekly spelling test. The first word, said Mr. Jupiter, is nincompoop. Nincompoop sounds like a naughty made up word, but it is actually in the dictionary. Nincompoop. Ashley A moved her lips, trying to sound out the word. Ashley B shut her eyes, trying to see the word in her mind. Ashley Z stretched his neck, trying to see the word on Stanford's paper. Ashley, said Mr. Jupiter, I hope I didn't see you looking at your neighbor's work. I hope you didn't see either, replied Ashley. At her desk, Amisha Spellwaldy wrote the word with quick, sure strokes. Easy peasy, she said under her breath. She covered her answer with her arm. The second word, said Mr. Jupiter, is wildebeest. While hiking across the Serengeti, I was once attacked by a wildebeest. Wildebeest. Calvin chewed nervously on his pencil eraser. Rachel frowned, wrote, and erased. Frowned, wrote, and erased. But Amisha did not hesitate. Easier, peasier, she said in a voice a bit louder. She wrote the word down, then held her head high. She wanted the rest of her classmates to know she wasn't having any spelling trouble. She smiled smugly at Mr. Jupiter. The third word, said Mr. Jupiter, is gaseous. If you eat the cook's hot lunch, you are bound to become gaseous. Gaseous. Jackie looked frantically around the room, hoping to see the word written on the chalkboard, a poster, a book spine, anywhere. Rose gave a little sob, but Amisha quickly scrawled the word on her paper. Easiest, peasiest, she said in a very loud voice. Victoria shot her a dirty look, but Amisha didn't care. She was floating, soaring. She was a spelling goddess. She breezed through the rest of her words, too. Fufafra, booby hatch, poiganip, poiganip, cat. Amisha was sure she knew them all. I'm going to get the whole test right, she told herself. She began turning over in her mind what would happen when she received a perfect test score. My classmates will cheer and Mr. Jupiter will declare me the best speller in the fourth grade. I'll go on to win the school spelling bee, then the state spelling bee, then the national spelling bee. I'll become such a famous speller that my face will be on the cover of magazines, newspapers, and cereal boxes. I'll be on talk shows and in commercials, and I'll become so famous that everyone will want to be just like me. Of course, Hollywood will make a movie of my life. With with all my movie money, I'll build a big castle and I'll have lots of puppies and horses and fancy butlers who'll serve me chocolate milk shakes and crystal goblets. And I'll travel around in the world and are meeting kings and queens and princes. They'll be so awed by my spelling skills. They'll make me an honorary princess. From then on, everyone will call me Princess Amisha. And I'll wear a diamond tiara every day, even to school. And Victoria Sovain will turn pea green with envy. And I'll buy my friends diamond tiaras too. And Victoria will cry and wish she'd been nicer to me. But I won't buy her anything. And then I'll take... <gasps> Mr. Jupiter clapped his hands. Please exchange your test papers with the person behind you, he said. Eagerly, Amisha handed her paper to Melvin, then accepted Lil's. Ooh, she could hardly wait until the spelling test had been checked. Oh, ooh, she could hardly wait until everyone saw her perfect score. Minutes later, Melvin handed back her paper. No, it couldn't be, but it was. She had spelled cat with a K. With a sigh, Amisha opened her spelling book and began working on next week's words. Slubbering, podunk, tittle-tattle dog. And the moral of this chapter is don't count your chickens before they're hatched. First kiss. In June, the fourth graders found Miss Turner sobbing behind love and customs. Dewey Decimal number 392. What's the matter? asked Missy. Did you lose your mittens? Did you catch the chicken pox? asked Emberly. Did Melville move? Ugh. Did Melville Dewey die? asked Lenny. No, no, sniffled Miss Turner. It's nothing like that. Then what's the problem? asked Mr. Jupiter. 
Miss Turner turned to him, her eyes shining with tears and something more. Don't you know? She asked in a voice throbbing with emotion. Haven't you guessed? I can guess, Ernest said. Me too, Ham said, and I'm only in fourth grade. Mr. Jupiter shot the boys a warning look. Then he said, children, go read a book, please. Read a book, said Amisha, and miss all the excitement, said Lil. Mr. Jupiter's face turned stony. Go. The children went, but only as far as espionage and spying. Dewey Decimal Number 327. They peeked around the bookshelf. Mr. Jupiter turned his attention back to the librarian. I have no idea what you're talking about, Paige. Miss Turner burst into a fresh round of tears. That's exactly the problem, she wailed. You have no idea. Mr. Jupiter looked very confused. I still don't understand. Bernadette looked at Victoria. For a teacher, he's not too smart, she whispered. She's going to have to explain it to him, Victoria whispered back. Let me explain it to you, sniffled Miss Turner. Told you so, whispered Victoria. Swallowing her tears, Miss Turner said, All year, I've tried to get your attention. I've bought new clothes. I've dyed my hair. I've even tortured myself with these teetering, too tight shoes. But have you noticed? No. To you, I'm still the mousy librarian you met during your first week at Aesop Elementary. Mr. Jupiter looked even more confused. Mousy, he repeated. He shook his head. I didn't see a mousy librarian that first day. I saw an interesting woman. You, you, you did, said Miss Turner. She blew her nose wetly. Mr. Jupiter nodded. Your wire-rimmed glasses reflected your intelligence. And your cardigan, the one with the apples appliqued on it, if I remember correctly, matched your personality. It did, said Miss Turner. She dried her mascara-rimmed eyes. Mr. Jupiter nodded again. Honestly, Paige, I liked you just the way you were. You did, said Miss Turner. I did, said Mr. Jupiter. They gazed at each other. Barfarama, shuddered Ham. I think they're going to kiss. I can't watch, groaned Jackie. She covered her eyes. Quick, cried Humphrey. Somebody warned Mr. Jupiter about cooties. But it was too late. Mr. Jupiter leaned down and touched his lips to the librarian's cheek. Ah, oh, to the girls. Bleh, gagged the boys. I'll never wash this cheek again, said Miss Turner. And tomorrow I'm wearing my cardigan. And the moral of this chapter is appearances aren't everything.